Hi there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 and once again I've been disorganized and have not gotten around to recording this in advance like I should have. So we're left with an uphill climb to get all of our 40 points out of the way before the weekends in 8 hours and 51 minutes. So first things first, we should do the weekly challenge which requires a 2010 Nissan 370Z. The best way to get one of those is actually one of the seasonal championships for which the reward is the Nissan 370Z. So the category required for this one is collector's series or something, it's a bit of a weird one. Uh, I had three cars available, two Ferraris and a Lotus and this particular Ferrari was the only one that I think I have ever used before. So there's the Lotus that we're hopefully going to be overtaking shortly, but of course, being a Lotus, it's really good through the corners. And then there's another Ferrari, looks like maybe an F50 or something. I did think that I had more of these vehicles, but some of them I might have tuned beyond the category, because it was only A800 limit, and I think some of them I might have boosted into the S1 range, which you kind of expect for a Ferrari, really. This one's just an old one. But we've got a few laps, so we don't need to rush. We'll try and focus on racing more cleanly, and slowly make our way to the front. Or we'll just barge our way through and, and get to the front that way, Whoop. and immediately get punished by doing a bad corner. But they're stuck behind me now, so tough. I actually have no idea if I've custom tuned this Ferrari at all, or if this is just stock at like 780 or something. It's feeling a bit slippery, so I do wonder whether or not the tyres are in need of an upgrade, but doing so might have pushed it into the S1 rating, so we can check after this race before the second one, see if there are any further improvements we can make. Could also be that it's set up for off-road, not sure. Either way, we're doing pretty well with it now that we know a little bit more what to expect from it. Roughly where we need to break. The one hard corner right after the uh, start finish straight we struggled a little bit with, but we're still ahead. The rest of these, you just need to make sure we don't slide too much essentially. And then, yeah, the guy behind us catches up a little bit through that section, but we seem to be better on the acceleration. So as long as we don't completely mess up, we get there in the end. Sure enough, I hadn't so much as upgraded it or tuned it at all, <laughs> turns out. And I was also correct in that I couldn't really change the tyres that much without pushing it into S1, which means I wouldn't be able to use it anymore for this championship. But I did at least give it sport tyres, one of the mildest things I can do. Also, some custom rims. But just a few tweaks here and there, hopefully it'll make a little bit of difference. It certainly feels a little bit more immediate in the steering and uh, the cornering. Quite as soft, but I couldn't affect the brakes at all, so still have to be mindful of that. But I mean, we did well enough in the first uh, in the first race without having to worry about any particular upgrades, so we just need to race cleanly, really. As much as we can, get in behind another one of the same. It's entirely possible that they have also made performance improvements, because as soon as you start tuning your car and bumping its rating, Generally, the cars you race against will also have improvements. But it depends on what they're drawing from. A lot of them probably only have like performance improvements, and if they don't also affect the handling, sometimes you can just make things worse. <laughs> if you just give a car lots of power but don't facilitate it putting that on the road, it just becomes too difficult to handle. Yeah, you might make a few gains on the straights, but this is a really twisty track. We really need the extra grip. 
short track too, which is nice. Seems to be three pretty short circuits. So we'll just have to remain grounded. Final lap, and I think I didn't quite make it my best one. Would be kind of nice if they gave you the full breakdown of your lap by lap times. It tells you what your best lap was, but it doesn't tell you which lap it was on, <laughs> or whether you improved. Speaking of laps, and very tight races and tight corners, yeah, we definitely don't need higher speeds in this one. I'm going to lean on a few people to get around these corners to start with. And then we'll have to worry about doing it ourselves on future laps. And Alfa Romeo there. I think I've only got a couple of Alfa Romeos. Uh, I need to collect a few more. This is a really weird track. It's the, the Winter Wonderland. It's technically inside the stadium. I thought they only used this one at like Christmas time. The seasonal events and stuff for it to show up in a championship is kind of weird it's so twisty through this middle section really makes the most of the space within the stadium area you can actually go up onto the, the banked corners there but it doesn't really advantage you in any way probably just makes things worse otherwise the stadium has just the oval circuit on balance, I much prefer this. I'm not a fan of the oval circuit. I just can't race on those tracks very well. I, I just don't know what to do in the corners. Whether to try and go high or to kind of go halfway. Let's just ride the half pipe. Why not? It's like the, the NASCAR style of racing is just very strange to me. Whereas this sort of race, where it's twisty corners, very technical, much more my kind of thing still not very good but it's definitely more my speed so let's try and turn there we go turn around here We've got to remember that coming out of that corner we're not just trying to navigate our corner we're trying to then angle in on the next corner basically driving like two or three corners ahead ideally whenever there isn't a straight separating them then you've got to be trying to keep your mind on what's to come. A little bit of a nudge there. But we are now well ahead. And ready to come up to the line. Spin around. Why not? And now we have our Nissan 370Z. I actually already had one, but it's always fun to show the process of acquisition. <laughs> The other reason that I wanted to get a stock one is because, sure enough, the first thing that I need to do with it is spend 10,000 on upgrades, and the quickest way to do that is just buy some new tyres. Semi slicks 10k, bumps it into the A grade immediately, job done. We're not going to stop there though, we're also going to do our usual treatments, we're going to give it some very specific rims, which are minus six kilos are just the lightest ones you can get and we're going to adjust the drivetrain give it a race gearbox of some description seven speed looks good drive line drive shaft rather race diff and upgrade the brakes if we're going to bump this into a class let's do it properly and make it that it's going to at least be pleasant to drive shall we some performance upgrades, intake, valves, we're not going to go nuts though, I'm not going to give it the full works, I don't want it to be S1, we want to just stop at A. 789 I think is actually good enough. Well maybe I should have gone a bit more nuts on the power front because what I need to do now is take it drifting and going faster is always better for that. I need to accumulate 200,000 total score in the Nissan. But I've come here first because I need to get three stars in this particular drift zone, which requires 130,000 points for a daily challenge. So I like to double dip where I can. My PB on this one is something like 150,000 in an S1 Holden Ute, which is definitely much better equipped for drifting. But we seem to have found a pretty good mix here. We've stuck it in second gear, we've turned off all the driving aids. 
and we are sustaining a decent drift. I think we're going to get the three stars. I'm probably going to have to do a second run to get up to the 200,000 that we need total. But that's all right. I, if I'd started off better, I probably could have even gone and gotten a full 200k right off the bat because we are racking up the points at the end here. Yeah, I really just needed to get a better start. That's right, that's a good start. We don't need to do much on the return trip. The great thing about drift zones as well is that you rack up the skill combo as well because you're constantly swapping between drifting one way or the other. So you max out your multiplier really quickly. You're generally only hitting like 100 maybe 250 points each time if you get a, a great drift but you don't need to worry about crashing into traffic because you're in the drift zone area and you're just constantly racking up points okay i've got more than what i need now i'm fairly sure because we've got like 150,000. so let's just drive this properly <laughs> just take it out of the zone because we don't want to fail it crucially can't fail the drift zone don't bank the points until you drive through the end but you can just drive normally in order to complete it and after drifting around all over the farmland we're now in the desert because the next thing we have to do is beat a rival's ghost with our car and it just so happens that i've been working my way through the accolades of doing clean laps on or clean times on all of the rivals boards and I haven't done many of the street races yet, so street race through the desert in the Nissan. As you can see by the minimap bottom left, we are ahead of our rival, not by a huge amount admittedly, but their target time is an hour and 24, so at a certain point they must have just walked away from their computer and left the game running I think, uh, because there is no other reasonable way why it would take an hour and 24 minutes you could probably discover every single road on the map in that time i'm not going to try that though now interestingly even though it's a street race technically i haven't seen any other traffic on the roads yet so it seems that is disabled in the rivals perhaps and then you don't have barriers to hit so i think the only way that you don't get a clean time i guess is if you miss a checkpoint but even then, if you miss it initially, you can just drive around and then go through it again? I don't know. Um, it seems seems difficult to not get a clean time on this. If you hit any of the other bits on the side of the road, if you go really out of control. We're also driving pretty safe, as you can probably tell, because our goal is not to go super fast or anything like that. There are separate accolades. For placing within like the top five percent in particular uh rivals categories and stuff but we i think we've already got those and this is just an a class so we're not even going that fast or that crazy well that's the weekly challenge out of the way and now we'll do the photo challenge which is to take a photo of any alfa romeo on the frozen lake at the Grand Caldera. I guess if you had the Alpha 8C that qualified for that previous championship, that's a possible combo. We don't have it, but we do have this nice cool blue Alpha that we've had for a while. And that, plus a few of the little daily challenges we did along the way, has gotten us halfway there for the Mazda MX-5. And then we can see from the car restrictions on the PR challenges that those are gated behind the BMW M397. I likely already have that, but it is the reward for the other seasonal championships, so we might as well jump on in on that. And we get to pull out our Supra again. B700 is the requirement for this, retro sports cars I think it was. Is this or the NSX really? I've got lots of other options, but those are the two that I've actually tuned up. The NSX is faster, but this is more nimble, and this course has a fair few twists and turns to it. I really should fix the bonnet of this though, it's a really ugly looking thing. Oop. And we missed the turn. I always do that on this track. <laughs> Some of these street races I will just miss when I'm supposed to turn because, funnily enough, there's no barriers or anything. Oh, we're racing around our castle. 
Let's go to bonnet view of this. So this is where the fun with this bonnet design does come because you get the funky reflections. <laughs> which is kind of a fun touch, but ultimately I think I need to just uh, downgrade it to the flat bonnet instead of the street bonnet that I assume this is. But regardless of the shape of our bonnet, what matters more is the shape of our corners. <laughs> and diving down into the city, just picking them off one by one. For some reason they braked really hard for that little squiggle on the way into town, but it really wasn't that difficult to navigate. Now, we do need to remember to take the right corners at the right streets, no going straight ahead. I don't think this one dives into a tunnel at all. There's the tunnel run map, which is always confusing me. What would have been really nice is if the course route went all around this direction, but it didn't have the checkpoints. Pro tip, you can do that on your own blueprints. You can have it so that you drive around these sorts of streets. So it plots the race route for the AI based on your car movements when you're putting the blueprint together. But you control where you put the checkpoint. So you can just put a checkpoint down as if you drove straight through and cut the corner blatantly without being punished. And the AI will still merrily drive around as if they had to do the whole track. Easy way to rack up a few wins. Not that I've done so myself. <laughs> Except for... I did experiment with that in Forza Horizon 4 because there is a, a accolade slash well, an achievement in that game where you have to win a race in a PLP 50 and that's a tough ask sometimes. So I did put a race together that did allow me to cut the corners. I ended up winning it regardless, but uh, a little bit of security. Alright, race number two, and we have swapped cars. We've jumped into the Honda NSX this time. This track has a bit more straightaways than tight corners. I wanted the extra speed that the NSX brings for this rather than retune my uh, my Supra. It's nice having multiple cars that are tuned up for different specialties ideally. You can just swap between. It's a lot easier to swap between cars than it is to retune them or swap upgrades out. It's not like the cornering on the NSX is bad, it's just it's technically not rated as well as what the Supra is. But these are also just B category cars, uh, just in the top end of the B rating. So you never have to worry too, too much about spinning out of control or anything. That Supra's got a really cool paint job. <laughs> I, I like the Pokemon Pikachu Mewtwo combo on that. Very nice. Crunch. That's the tight corner, and there's always traffic there, it seems. <laughs> so I'm not going to try rewinding that to get a better line or anything like that, because if I'd tried to take that corner with a good line, I'd have T-boned the car anyway. So we just use it to crunch out of the way. Hopefully I pushed it in the way of my opponents. Another tight corner here. I'm surprised that there isn't traffic in the way on this one as well. Looks like the beetle was, if we'd gotten there a little bit earlier. But instead, it was clear. And we're well ahead, and I mean, it's a little early to call it, but uh, we're essentially on the home straight. <laughs> I mean, I was saying in the rivals thing of, uh, you know, how you could not get a clean run. That's because there was no traffic. I wonder if there is for the B-rated rivals. Final race, and we're still in the Honda. This one has even more long straights, including a stretch on the motorway. So we definitely want the car tuned more for that. But first we have a really sharp corner that I'll really try not to just drive straight ahead on. 
like I have done previously. <laughs> Once again, a case of just really not hitting the traffic. So long as you don't hit the traffic and you don't miss the checkpoints, you should be good on these races. And it is strange that... It is strange that sometimes it feels that the higher car ratings don't have traffic. <laughs> I feel I've noticed that on like the S1 and S2 races. But that's the only thing that really distinguishes a street race from a road race, so without traffic it just feels weird. Now we're on the motorway stretch. Ideally you want to go straight through there. It is the, the suggested line on the minimap, and as long as you follow that, you miss out on crashing through the barrier, which in a B-class car you definitely want to do, because if you hit the barriers or any obstacles, you take a big hit to your speed. And if we take this corner well enough, we shouldn't have to brake too hard, if at all. Just kind of lift off a little bit. Once again, probably lift off a little bit for this corner. And up to the line. That'll be another championship in the bag. So we have the BMW M397, and now we've got to do some PR challenges with it. Starting with another drift zone. Where we need to get 75,000 points, which is almost a new PB, I think, for me. So we've made the very rare decision to upgrade it specifically for drifting. I already had one of this type of car anyway. So we now have one that I can customize for racing, and this one is for drifting. So it has low grip tires, the drift gearbox, drift suspension, and sure enough, just like that, we get a PB, I think. And more importantly, seasonal objective complete. Now the downside is we've done all of these very drift-centric upgrades, but the next PR challenge is a speed trap. <laughs> so we need to hope that we can keep it uh, tidy enough through these bends on the way up, ooh, never mind, to the speed trap in order to get a high enough score, and we can't. That is the danger of tuning something for drifting. We might actually have to undo some of that. Uh, we just need to take it a little bit nicer through this corner in particular. I think I need like 180 Ks, which should be fine if we don't hit everything on our way to get there. Yes, there we go. That's much better. Sure enough, 202. And the third is a speed zone. We need to get, I think, 160 average. Now, this is going to be tricky using a drift setup because there's two corners that we have to navigate very carefully through here and then be able to accelerate again to get a high enough average. I am not optimistic at being able to get it first try. Oh, hang on. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Ooh. 1k an hour more to earn the objective. You know what? We'll run it back. I think just upgrading the tires would be fine. Or just getting rid of the drift gearbox, I think, would probably do it. Even if we just went back to the stock one. But we'll try. We'll try running it back. We do just have to be very careful and go nice and wide on the entrance. And then go carefully through there. That one's good. We should be able to maintain about 160 through each corner. A little bit wide there, but not wide enough. There we are. And we can park the BMW up again for now. Leave that for the next time we need something that needs drifting in that particular category. And instead we're pulling out our Skyline GTR that we were using a few weeks ago. To do one of the event lab races. Oh, I overcooked that slightly there, never mind. Plenty of time to catch up. And we'll see if we can just do some nice clean racing as much as we're allowed to do with the uh, with the AI being the way that it often is. I'm not quite sure what's different about this track other than just a lot of extra stuff that's been added in along the sides. I feel that we might actually be going backwards on a normal race, I'm not sure. 
I also don't know whether or not this is going to turn into a dirt race at some point. Yeah, here we go. It's a bit of a, a bit of a back road. It's not full off-road though, so we should be fine. Banked a lovely amount of skill points there from the fact that we did all of that cleanly. And then hit a tree for our shot. So this seems to be becoming a bit of a theme because I think there was one such last time as well where the laps are just a little bit bigger than you normally get. About a two minute lap instead of more around like the minute 30 mark. I'm generally fine with that. Though, uh, given that I'm trying to squeeze everything into one evening, I could have done with some short races. But never mind, that's my fault. <laughs> I do quite like this length of race because you get a little bit more involved in the track. A lot of the time it just feels like they're, they're really short. You don't get much time to actually enjoy the setting. You just threw it so quickly, bish bash bosh three laps done within like four and a half five minutes it is nice for tuning through championships don't get me wrong <laughs> but given that the event lab races are standalone they're not a full championship it does make sense to have them be a little bit longer Now, of course, I say that, and I'm accepting of the fact for this particular track because I'm enjoying it, and it's been designed well. Uh, some of the event lab races we've done, I have been very glad when I've been over. All in all, pretty nice track. I think the position of the start-finish line is a bit weird. It's just kind of randomly up on the hill. I feel that maybe it should have been down here by the waterfront or something, or there's like a village area further back. Maybe the start finish line could have been through the village. And then you're just racing down to the coast and up through the hills again and back. Just where it is feels a bit odd, <laughs> but that's fine. The overall track lad itself, yeah, pretty good. Well done. And stepping it up a notch now and into the Lamborghini Huracan that we have tuned up previously. And we've got uh, yet another Event Lab track and one more where it's just been a case of make a racetrack and slap a bunch of tall buildings around it. I don't know if this is meant to be modelled on a real racetrack. The sheer number of balloons around the side make me think no. I could really do with not being pushed off the track by the AI, that that would be nice. Never mind. <laughs> we'll spend the, the first lap kind of learning the layout, and then hopefully be able to work our way up, kind of pay attention to what they're doing. This track surface is also very slippery it feels, like the braking is not wanting to work very well. I don't know what surface that I've used, but it doesn't feel like a proper racing surface, which is odd, to say the least. Because normally this is a car that handles really well and has really good grip, and I can feel it struggling through a lot of these corners. First with the braking and then it just kind of shudders even with the acceleration coming out. Something about this artificial surface, it's not a fan of. So we'll see how well we can hold this together. Not that. And whether or not we can make up places. Oh, that guy just braked all of a sudden, that's kind of weird as well. <laughs> it's almost like he thought that he'd finished the race. I don't know, maybe the, the driver tar behaviour is presumably modelled on people who have raced this before, so maybe someone got mi mixed up and thought that it was only one lap. We didn't get pushed off the road on that corner this time, so that's a good start. But we will have to try and real make up our speed. Okay, so the side surface here, we seemed to race much better on for some reason, and now we're just sliding again. What is this race surface? This is horrific. We've had this with one other time as well, I seem to remember. There was another event lab that was like this. 
but the surface was just really slippery. And it's really annoying because I do need to win the event to get the points. And I don't want to waste a ton of time just trying different things on this track to try and make up for the lack of grip. So I'm fairly positive this Lamborghini is not tuned for like off-roading or anything. Which maybe that's the problem. Maybe if it was tuned for rallying it would be doing all right. All right we've really got to concentrate on these corners and try and do a much better job. So we left ourselves with a lot to do leading up to the final corners. So we're having to just lean on the AI a little bit through here and hope that we can get in on this corner, crash him out of the way and sneak past on the final straights. Maybe. Yes. Whew. And I'm very glad to get that one out of the way without having to redo that. And now I think it's time to smash some things. Crunch. Oh, there's like a nice mural zone up there. Might take advantage of that a bit later. We need to hit 10 of these coffee cup pinatas. Oh, we jumped over that one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Maybe there, there are only 10, because they're positioned very specifically, aren't they, on those pedestals? All right, we'll play their game. Crunch. Oh, there's even beams inside them, that's cool. One up here. Crunch. Oh no, there's more than 10. Oh. I haven't even been counting. I don't know how many more I need to do. It's very cathartic after that race. Are there any up here? Yes, there are. Crunch. Crunch. There we go. Spill the beans complete. Fantastic. And let's go head over here where there's a nice mural. I don't think I actually need any extra points, but there is a daily challenge for taking a picture of ourselves at this area. And sure enough, we're actually two points over what we needed, but that gets us the Subaru. And that's it for another season. What have we got to look forward to for spring? We can get a VW thing. All right, I've never even heard of that before. That's interesting. And own and drive the 1990 190E, which I'm going to assume is not a reward, unless it's a reward from the Horizon Tour then uh, yeah, you're just going to have to get that one from other means, I guess. But it's a pretty cheap and common car, I'm fairly sure, so we should be fine. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week.